everybody, in this video we're going to talk about the Fetch API, uh, which we can use as a way to perform HTTP requests to fetch some data in a Stencil.js application. And we can also use this uh, anywhere else as well, uh, but we're just going to focus on how to use it with Stencil. So I've got the Can I Use website up now, which is a great resource for checking which features are available in which uh, browsers. And so I just want to show you the Fetch API is supported by um, all modern web browsers now. Uh, you can see on this little uh, chart here that support is missing for IE 11 and some other browsers here as well, like Opera Mini and the BlackBerry browser. Um, but most modern uh, browsers do support it. So it's like we can make use of pretty safely in a lot of circumstances. And so on this page here, it says that Fetch is a modern replacement for XML HTTP requests. Uh, you may have used this in the past, perhaps if you know, you've been uh, doing web development for a little while. Uh, but basically, this is how you could launch an HTTP request in a JavaScript application. Uh, it was quite um, verbose, I guess. It was it's quite difficult to use, a bit awkward to use, and so typically we'd use uh, libraries for that instead. And so now there's plenty of libraries that you can use to help you perform HTTP requests like Angular's HTTP client. We have things like Axios, I think that's how you pronounce it, uh, and some other libraries as well. Uh, but with the Fetch API, it's actually a pretty clean and simple API that we can use that is just built into the browser. So that's what we're gonna take a look at in this uh, lesson. You can install other libraries if you want, if that's how you want to handle HTTP requests. So there's no reason not to use other HTTP libraries if you want to. It's just that Fetch is built into the browser and it's something we can easily use. So let's take a look at doing that. So what I've done is I've just generated a new Stencil Ionic PWA and I have just created a service uh, inside of the application which we're gonna play around with, uh, try a few different uh, requests and talk about some potential issues. And all I'm doing is just calling that uh, service here, which I've imported into the home page. I'm just uh, calling methods on that service in the component did load here. So the first thing we're going to look at is just a basic get request, which is usually the sort of most simple HTTP request to run. And this is basically all the code we need uh, to do that. And we're using the async await syntax here. You can just use standard promise syntax if you prefer, uh, but it does make it quite a lot simpler to use async await here. And so what I'm trying to do here is make a get request to the Reddit API. And this is something I just like to use for testing because you can easily just make a request to Reddit. There's no authentication required and we can uh, turn, uh, return back some data from that request. So uh, it's a nice little thing just to test out. And so all we need to do here is just call fetch and supply the URL that we want to fetch from. So this is gonna make a get request to that URL and that's going to return a promise, which is why we are awaiting that. And that's gonna give us the response from that server. And then we can just use the JSON method here to return the data from that response. So if I just log out console.logjson as I am here, we will save that and take a look in the browser. So you can see here we have that uh, response being logged out here. And so this is the actual data from the response, not the response itself. Uh, but if we expand this, we can just see that uh, this is the uh, response specifically from Reddit. So all this stuff is just gonna contain all sorts of different um, GIFs that have been posted in the GIFs uh, subreddit. And so from there, we could you know, use that data however we felt like. Uh, so let's go a little bit further here and let's actually inspect what we are getting from the uh, full response. So I'll save that and we'll take a look in the browser again. And there is something interesting to talk about here when using Fetch. So back in the browser now, and we can see that we have the full response listed here. So if we expand that out, you can see all the other stuff that comes along with that response, including uh, status codes and things like that. And what is important to talk about in the context of the fetch API is this uh, okay uh, property here. So what we'll generally want to do is uh, we wanna fetch this data, but we also wanna make sure we catch any errors that occur. So typically what we would do, if we wanna catch any errors that are occurring as a result of a promise being rejected, what we can do with the async await syntax 
is to just um, plop that inside of a try block here and then we can catch any errors that occur. So I'll just move that up as well and then we'll be able to just say console.log error. So now if this promise rejects, we're going to be able to handle that. And again, if you're using the then syntax, it looks a little bit different, but it's the same uh, basic idea. We wanna uh, run our promise, we wanna get a response back from that, and we wanna catch any errors that occur. So we might expect when doing this, if we do get some kind of error, that it's gonna trigger the catch here and log out that error. But just to show you an example, let's see what happens if we try to just hit a endpoint that doesn't actually exist. So if I save this now and jump back into the browser, you can see that we uh, we can see this message not found error 404, uh, but this isn't actually uh, triggering the catch error block. Uh, to make this more obvious, let me just say console.log uh, error, just so we can see when that's triggered and why not, I'll put up success up here as well. So if we go back into the browser now, and we can see that we are just getting a success. And so this error block is never actually triggering, which you would kind of expect that it would because we're getting a not found 404 error. Uh, but in terms of the fetch API, this is considered a successful request. Uh, it's made a request to the server, it's got a response, everything is completed fine. Uh, if we expand this response though, this is the successful response that we've got, you can see here that okay, is set to false. Whereas in a uh, truly successful response where we actually got the data back we wanted, uh, OK is set to true. So what we need to do in this case is we need to make sure that we check for that OK value. So to properly hand, uh, handle errors, what we can do is uh, just basically check for that OK property. And what you'll usually do is just create an additional function somewhere uh, so I have a handle errors function here. You can call it whatever you like, it doesn't matter. Uh, just so we don't need to write this for every single fetch request we're making, we can just write a function that will check that response uh, value, the okay value, and if it's not okay, it's going to throw an error. And what this will do is it will cause that try catch block to fail. So we have that function now. So what we're gonna do is uh, just trigger that in here. So we'll say handle uh, this.handle errors response and in um, make sure I spell that right in a larger application where you're not just you know, dealing with one service you'd probably put this handle errors function out into its own little service or helper function that uh, you could call from anywhere in the application so let's save that and we'll see what happens now when we're trying to access that uh, non-existent resource and you can see this time we get that error triggered and we got the, the error message being logged out here as well and so now that's behaving as we'd expect. Uh, we want to consider 404s or 500 internal server errors. We want to consider those to be failures. And then we'll probably have some code in here that's going, they're going to handle that you know, however necessary. So that's the basics of performing a get request. And I don't have a full example to go through with you here because I don't uh, currently have an endpoint set up that I can post some data to but I'm going to show you what you need to do for a post request anyway. And it is very similar. It's a little bit more complex because there's a few more things you need to handle. Uh, but the basic idea is we have some data here we want to send. In this case, it's just uh, an object. And same sort of thing again, we put that in the try catch uh, block. We should also you know, make sure we send that off to the handle, uh, handle errors function as well to make sure we catch any of those errors. And so the basic idea is again, we just call that fetch method uh, uh, with the URL that we want to post the data to. Uh, but we also supply a second parameter here, which is this object. And this object is defining the data that we want to send and the, the type of data we're sending and anything else we need to configure. So in this case, we need to set the method to post. So it knows to post the data. And then we have this body property here, which we can attach our data to. Uh, we need to make sure to send that as a stringified uh, JSON string. So it's going to uh, convert that from a JavaScript object into a JSON string that can be sent to the server. And then we set the, the headers here, the content type to application slash JSON. And 
you can have different headers here, but typically it's going to be application JSON if you're sending JSON data to uh, the server. So you set up that uh, response there, await fetch, and then just like with the first example there, we just await for response.json, and that's going to return any response that is sent from the server, uh, but it's also going to uh, have successfully sent the data that you want to the server. So that's the basic idea behind using the fetch API, and it's a good fit for Stencil JS applications in general. Uh, I guess Stencil in general has this kind of philosophy of cutting down on dependencies, and there isn't really any dependencies at all in a Stencil JS application. So you can install things if you want, but if you want to keep your applications as lightweight as possible, using fetch here is a fantastic thing to use, and especially because we can just write fetch. There's no need to import anything, install anything. It will just be avail uh, available globally, and you can just use it. Uh, compared to the way that this was done in the past by default, it was you know quite convoluted, a bit messy, and probably something people didn't really want to deal with. But now with this API, it is pretty simple and straightforward. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this quick introduction to the Fetch API. If you did, do feel free to leave a like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.